Hey everyone, it's Lens Addict here and today I'm going to show you how to clean out the front radiator on your Tesla Model 3. Um, and I think this also works for the Model Y, but I don't have a Model Y so I can't confirm that. Um, this video, I'm going to show you how to take out the frunk and how to clean stuff out from the front radiator. And if you're wondering if you should or should not do this, you probably don't want to do this if your car's done low Ks and it's new. But if your car's done like 80,000 kilometers, 50,000 kilometers, or you've had it many years and used the air conditioning a lot, uh, dirt and debris can become accumulated in the front radiator and you can get it out. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Another th reason why you might want to do this, you might notice that your air conditioning just isn't performing like it used to. The fan runs all the time. You have to put the temp lower than what the temp you're actually getting from the AC is. So I'll show you how to fix that. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you pop the frunk and then take this off. It's not going to be that easy. There's all these clips and you pull them off. So it'll come undone, clip, clip, clip. Um, and then you're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. And there's a few things you gotta undo. So there's two here. And we'll, we'll actually bring the camera up closer so it's easier to see what you need to undo. So to start off, you're gonna unscrew these two screws here with the 10 bit um, driver or the 10-bit socket and yeah you just unscrew them. I like to keep them in the frunk so they don't go missing. Um, ignore me talking to the camera because the audio was so bad I'm just gonna do a voiceover. Yeah you're gonna undo these two screws here that I'm now undoing. There's another one on the left after this one that I'm undoing now as you can see. So yep I'm gonna undo that screw and once that one's undone, there's another thing that we need to do. So basically, if you want to take this off, you can push it from down here and it'll pop up. And there is another two screws in here. So you're going to take, undo those screws. So now uh, what you want to do is, uh, if there is a way to unclip this light, you want to unclip it so you don't have to route it through. Unfortunately on mine, I couldn't see a way to unclip it. Um, um, so now you're going to take out the this little thing here, which is the air conditioning vent. It has a few clips and you can just lift it out, it's similar to the frunk. Um, there's like um, just two little white clips there that you'll see and you can take it out. Um, then you'll see a washer fluid bottle and there's actually a, a, a bolt on that one so just undo that bolt and um, make sure it doesn't fall into the um, cavity of the model free front trunk area so what I did is I hold onto it with my hand and make sure that the last bits of unscrewing it I, I use my um, hand to make sure it can't go anywhere because if it falls in there I think it's going to be a nightmare to get it out and anyone who's worked on cars before knows the, um, the nightmare of having bolts fall into your engine bay, it's really hard to get them back, so yeah. Now the front trunk can come out, so there's a few clips up the back here that I'm undoing. Um, and there's also the same one, it's like mirror image, same on both sides, so there's clips. You'll see me pulling those clips undone. And now we should be good to actually take this frunk out, and you'll see me position that little um, covering for the front area there so that I can feed it through that hole. So you'll see, see how I'm positioning it so it'll fall through the hole because I wasn't able to undo it. And there you go, it fell through the hole. It takes a bit of practice and there you go. The front trunk is out, or the front trunk liner I should say is out. The other thing I'd recommend that you do, which I've just realized, is you should probably unplug the 12 volt battery. But I think it's okay to do this without unplugging it as long as you don't sever any connections and you should probably also not wear a watch because if you bridge two connectors and the 12 volt goes through here it'll like weld your watch so make sure you don't wear anything metallic while you do this um, but here's the radiator here so let's pop that open 
So to undo the radiator, there's, there's clips on the top and you can kind of just lift them up with your finger one by one. And it takes a bit of practice because they kind of like to re-clip themselves as you're unclipping the others. So, and there's another two clips on the sides of the radiator plastic kind of vent housing. I'm not sure what to call it. Um, they also are really big. So you got to use your thumb and your finger um, while lifting so that they don't just re-clip themselves because it seems like it wants to kind of just clip itself back in. Uh, so then you'll pull this out and once you pull it um, out a bit, you should be able to see inside and what's inside of your radiator and all the dirt in there. So I'll show you what that looks like now inside of the radiator. So in here, there is a lot of dirt. Not that bad for this car, um, but there's quite a bit in here. So what I'm gonna do is maybe an unconventional way of doing it, unconventional way of doing it, but what I've seen on YouTube, a lot of people like to vacuum this, but I reckon if you just get water and you should be able to just flush it out. So I'm gonna give that a go, and if it doesn't work, then we'll vacuum it. But it's actually really hard to get in there with a vacuum cleaner, and I don't wanna accidentally bend the radiator with like plastic vacuum cleaner parts. So I'm just gonna spray water and see if I can use the water spray from just a normal hose, not a pressure washer or anything like that, to get the dirt out. So let's give that a go. Here is what the front radiator looks like after spraying um, all that water. And yeah, most of the leaves came out. Um, I don't mind if there's still a little bit left in there because um, you know, you're not gonna get perfection, but getting all of those leaves out is good enough. And as you can see on the ground, there's also lots of leaves and they all came out of the front radiator. So yeah, now it looks pretty clean, clean enough that the airflow is not restricted by leaves and stuff like that. So now that we got all the dirt out from the radiator, I'll show you how to uh, put this back on and put it all back together. So let's do it. So first, uh, you'll just push this back together. So you'll clip down here. And you clip here as well, which it does. all clipped in. So once your radiator is all clipped in, you can put the front trunk back in. Um, if there's anything else you wanted to do on the front of the car, now's a good time, <laughs> such as change the battery. Um, but yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to route that plastic cover that you're seeing me grab back through that hole, which is actually trickier than getting it to go out of the hole because gravity is not helping you this time. You have to fight gravity. Um, so yeah, you feed it through that hole and pull it through. It will, you can definitely get it through. And yep, once it's in, now just focus on getting the front trunk in. So those clips, some of them are metal. So be careful, especially around the back, that they don't scratch the fenders on your car. Um, it takes, just, just go take it slow, take your time and you'll be fine. Um, and yeah, now that it's in, that it's like sitting in the right spot, just manually clip those in because I don't find that they clip in on themselves if you just screw the, the um, front trunk in. You kind of have to assist them to clip in. So that's what I'm doing here with my hand. I'm just pushing those clips in on both sides. Uh, there's no other clips that I could see. It's just, um, just the, the bolts. So yeah, once you feel like it's all clipped in. And the other thing you want to do is actually move the front around so that the drill, or sorry, not the drill, the, the holes that the bolts go into are in the right position. Um, so now I'm screwing the bolts back in one at a time. 
Uh, I leave all the bolts in the front so they don't go missing, but maybe you have a dedicated place you want to put them, but that's why I'm grabbing them out of the front. I just left them in there. And uh, don't tighten them super tight. Uh, this is not like a structural component, like a wheel or something. Just hand tight. Don't use like a wrench with lots of um, extra force on it. I'm pretty sure just screwing this in is good enough. Um, yeah. So now I'm doing more of those bolts. And you can see me pushing the frunk there because I found that the bolts weren't... It was kind of too far forward. So I'm pushing it back so that the front trunk is aligned properly with the rest of the car and yeah continuing to um, screw them in there's one two three four five six seven or I think there's seven bolts total uh, unless I'm mistaken uh, so yeah continuing to do that feel free to, to uh, skip through the video if uh, you don't want to see this I, I actually find though when I watch these tutorial videos having it really uh, fast I don't like so I'd rather have a slow video that you can skip through now I'm doing the uh, washer fluid attachment point uh, so just screwing that in at the washer fluid spot and yeah hand tight the washer fluid one you want to make sure it doesn't fall into the car that could be a big problem uh, don't let it fall into the engine bay or the, I guess the cooling bay because there's this is a real wheel drive tesla there's no engine bay here but i guess if it was a all-wheel drive you would have a motor there um yeah so screwing that in checking you can see me actually checking the side there to see if i accidentally scratched it but i didn't so i was pretty grateful for that now that all the screws are in we'll put this thing back where it belongs so as you'll see these clips here they line up with these bits here so now you're gonna push that in once you've got it lined up, as you can see me kind of lining it up here and now I'm pushing it in and it should clip in. Yep, it just clipped in. So now that front bit is as it's supposed to be. Now we're going to put this back. That should be it. So let's test the air conditioning and see if the fans go as loud as they did before. So I've got the air conditioning running at max speed and I can see that the fan is going at a much lower RPM now. So let's listen to what that sounds like outside of the car. So we can see it is much, 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 much cleaner. There are some leaves still, but that's okay. They're pretty hard to get. But the main radiator is really clean and the fan is not running so loudly anymore, which is great. All these leaves you see here came out of the car, out of the radiator area, which is awesome. So heaps of stuff came out. Um, a lot more right down here too. So that's great, we got lots out. Sorry for all the bird noise, they are being very loud, but I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you clean the radiator on your Model 3. Um, yeah, hope it was useful. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. I'm going to make a video on how to clean the cabin filter, or sorry, not clean, how to replace the cabin air filter for your car for the Model 3, so that'll be coming up next. See you all in the next video. Leave some comments if you have any questions. Lenzetic out.